Hi everyone, we are live again with the, the wonderful Heba, who's going to teach us or share her knowledge on how to play CTFs. Uh, she has done, um, she has played many CTFs and uh, she has won a lot of them. And we give all the best to her so that she can win many more to come. And today she is with us to to tell her to to tell us her experience on. Um, how to play CTF and uh, what are the basic tactics that you can use uh, while solving the challenges. And the topic for today is uh, play, learn and hack. Over to you, Heba. Hello, I'm very happy to be with you all today. Thank you, Vandama, for your invitation. Hope it's gonna be a good training for all of you. Today I'm gonna share with you many secrets I use while CTFs, uh, including my uh, personal notes, how to document things, to keep uh, like uh, like an archive for all CTFs I play, so that I have like a uh, repository of many ideas. So I'm going to share with you today many things. Let's go through the agenda. First, I will be talking about an introduction to cybersecurity, what is cybersecurity, as well as famous data breaches that happened and how can we start in server security, whether to play a CTF or if you want to like take it as a career and gain money for, out of it. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what is a CTF, what are the types there for CTFs, CTF resources, and then we're going to play a simple CTF together. And here I'm going to share with you uh, some secret practice. So let's start. Um, okay, first of all, I'm not sure if all of you already know me, but um, I will briefly introduce myself. My name is Heba Hamdi Farhat. I work as an information security consultant in a company called Secure Master. It is located in Egypt. Uh, I have won many like uh, awards. Uh, I'm grateful for that. Thanks everyone who chose me in any award. My recent certifications is OSCP and OSWP and there are other certifications, but uh, these are the most recent ones. Um, if anyone want to prepare for any of them, feel free to contact me after the video uh, and I can tell you like my, my personal roadmap that I used to get certified and this is my LinkedIn profile, feel free to contact me and ask me any questions. I know that maybe I reply late a little bit, but I, will, <laughs> but I always uh, try to reply. Okay, so I want to use, I want someone tell me if you see this car and you want to steal it. How many ways is there to steal this car? If a thief wanna steal it, how many ways can a thief steal this car? Actually, infinite ways. There's no one way, there's no one certain way that a thief can steal a car. This is exactly like the way it is in hacking. There's no one way that a hacker is doing a hack. No, there are many ways because every hacker has his own way to do the hacking thing. So. There's no like a silver bullet solution that when you do, you're gonna be super secure. No, it's not. Because every hacker has his own way, just like any thief has his own way to steal a beautiful car like this one. In cybersecurity, everything and everyone can be hacked. Every company, even large companies or small companies, no system is safe. Okay, let's now talk about famous data breaches that happened recently. That one is one of my favorite, actually. This one is for Facebook because Facebook is one of the, the largest companies, as you all know. That happened actually in 2018 when Facebook admitted that there is a cyber attack that happened that may expose the information from 50 million accounts. What happened is, you know, when you log into Facebook, whatever you use one factor authentication or two factor authentication, when you finish that authentication part, you're gonna have like a token, a secret thing that's gonna connect you to Facebook. It's gonna be sent in every request that you send to Facebook so that Facebook can know that you are authenticated. What happened is Facebook already keep record of these tokens to know that the token you are sending is that the correct one. What happened is the attackers gained access to servers of Facebook and accordingly, they have seen the secret tokens. So attackers now don't need your username or password or the code that is sent to your mobile if you are using two-factor authentication. Instead, 
Hackers can use the secret token directly to log into your Facebook as if they are you. Facebook tried to mitigate that vulnerability by logging out like 50 million users. I don't know if uh, some of you remember when we all opened the Facebook application on that day, I see that message saying, your session has expired, you have to log in again. That was a famous attack on 2018. It's actually one of my favorites. This one happened this year. This was for Twitter CEO. His account got hacked for 15 minutes. And actually, <laughs> hackers were tweeting accounts, were tweeting tweets on his behalf. That was really bad. Not only that, we're gonna talk now about IoT attacks. Since we, since we are already living in an era where everything is connected to the internet, there are accordingly many attacks that are happening more than before. We are now having in many different countries in the world, we're having refrigerators, we're having, um, everything is connected to the internet. Like coffee machines and everything. One of the famous attacks that happened, depending on that, is called the Mirai. Mirai made the idea a very simple thing and made it very, very powerful. It is the largest DDoS attack that was ever launched. They made use of many devices that are connected to the internet, like just like coffee machine, refrigerator, whatever device that is connected to the internet, any smart device, they made use of all of these devices and made them at the same time targeting a certain server that belongs to DYN company. How attackers can do this? Actually, because smart devices doesn't really care about security. Some of them use like reported credentials for the accounts they are using. Accordingly, attackers can log into many devices that are published on the internet be just because the users left them on the default passwords. Accordingly, they, are, they can like make made an army of these devices to make them all make requests to a certain server at the same time. And accordingly, the server cannot respond to all these requests at the same time, so it does not become available. This attacks the server availability. The server is very an important is very important one. Why? Because it belongs to a company that is a service provider. It provides service to many big companies, just like we see in the screenshot here, to SoundCloud, to Twitter, Amazon. These are really big companies. So when the server is not available anymore, many other companies are not available as well. And as you all know, time, time in business costs really much time, uh, costs really much money. <laughs> so when the server is not available, these companies cannot perform their work, thus they're gonna lose much money. From the interesting things that attackers didn't only stop there, even human heart can be hacked. How can this happen? Actually, there are some people with some diseases that need, that need to have a device that's called pacemaker. But this device is implanted in the heart of the human. So for this device to go inside the human, there is need a surgery for the device to be implanted there. But honestly, or it's not logically that any doctor who wants to like adjust wants to adjust uh, something in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the device to open the human every now and then. It's not logical. The human, not a machine. So what happens is this device must be connected to the internet so that the doctor can remotely adjust this device. What happens is there's no security applied there. Thus hacker, thus, that's why hackers as well can control this device and then control it and can even stop this device. That can lead to, that can let the, um, the patient to die. This is an interesting exercise. I would love everyone to do it and tell me the result in the chat. I will give like two minutes for this one. This is a device, it is called, the website is called Have I Been Pwned? I will open it with you. This, this website is very interesting. It has been made by researchers. Uh, actually, they are gathering 
every data breaches that happen through many years. And what they do is they're offering the service that when you enter your email address, so just any email address, it's gonna tell you if this email address has been included in any security breaches that happened before or not. I want some of you to make it and tell me the result in the chat. I'll wait uh, two minutes for this. Okay, great. Anyone else has been phone? I'll tell you what to do, not, don't worry. My, this is good <laughs> no i i once my email address was there so the uh, wow. when i got to know about have i been pawned i checked my email and uh, it uh, the in one of the breaches my email was there so i immediately changed my password yeah okay i'll tell you things about that if your email has been included in a security breach first of all you have to do like Vandama has said you have to change its password, its password. Why? Because maybe the password was included in the security breach as well. And the most important thing, make sure you are not using the same password across many websites. That's what, why I'm saying that, because if it happens that one of your, uh, the websites you are using got involved in a, in a data breach, you don't want all your accounts to get hacked. So you don't, you don't want to choose the you don't want to use the same password across many accounts. This is one thing. Second thing, you have to be cautious when you're using your email because you may be targeted by phishing attacks. So make sure you're not pressing on links coming from strangers and you're always checking the link before pressing on it because it may be a phishing link. Oh, your three emails are found. Oh, this is bad. Actually, from my point of view, if your email is included in many security breach, you may consider stop using this email. This is from my point of view. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Okay, I guess it's now clear that everyone and every company is exposed to get hacked and everything can be hacked, even your heart and every company can be hacked. It's no matter how many security constraints they are adding in place, there's all the way to get hacked. Okay, so now how can you start in cybersecurity? I will talk about that from two different points of views. If you wanna have cybersecurity as a career that you wanna work in and gain money out of it, and, or if you want to do it just for CTFs, just for now, and you haven't just decided that you really want to work in this. So let's start. How can we start in CTFs? Uh, sorry, in cybersecurity? Okay. These fundamentals you need to have is where you're going to work in, as a cybersecurity engineer, or you're going to play CTF. This is like the fundamentals. This is very basic. You need to have, you need to know it. First of all, programming. We're having JavaScript, HTML, PHP, Okay, and Python and many more. What I'm going to say for JavaScript and HTML and PHP, this is very basic, you need to know it. And after that, any any programming language, you can learn it easily because you already have the basics of the programming. You have a mindset of how can you make a program. So whenever you were told to write a program in a certain language that you don't know, you can like check the syntax and write it. So it gonna, it's not gonna be um, a great problem. So try to master like one language or two languages. And then whenever you need another language, 
you'll easily uh, learn it. So you're not going to worry about that. Okay. Second, we need to know about the networks. It's very important. You will find these fundamentals in a course like CCNA routing and switches. Then we, you need to learn about database fundamentals. Why you need to know about database fundamentals? Because we are having attacks and server security field, just like the famous one, SQL injection. What is a database first? A database is a place where a company is storing its data. If you want to deal with this database, we'll need to talk to it. How can we talk to a database that's going to be through a query? How this query is written? What language is used? This is what you're going to learn in database fundamentals. And the operating system fundamentals. As you already know, our computer is mainly hardware. How can we deal with this computer and apply and, and install programs in it? How can this hardware understand how to deal with softwares and applications we are using. The, we need an operating system. It's an intermediate layer between the hardware and the software. And then Linux and Windows administration. Not only that we are using Windows, this is okay. No, it's not. We need to dig more and know about how Windows really works, how application works, what is Active Directory. So we need to dig, to dig deep more. It's not only about that we can use Windows. No, we need like take it from a lower level. Okay, the courses after that are the cool courses. It's it's not only like fundamentals like the, 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 the previous one, but here we're gonna like start knowing about cyber security. The previous ones was fundamentals. Maybe you can learn about them in computer science faculty, but the upcoming ones are for security. First of all, I believe that many of you have already noticed that cybersecurity, at least, it has its own language, its own expressions. You'll see people talking, saying, oh, exploit, vulnerability, uh, risk, expressions like that. If you are not familiar with these expressions, it's okay. This is because it's like cybersecurity has its own language. You need to know uh, its fundamentals, its expression, what does it mean? And what is hacking? What is the level of hacking? What can I do to hack and get explored to some of cybersecurity fundamentals? The courses that cover that is CH or Security Plus. I prefer CH, uh, but from my point of view, don't try to get certified in CH because it's certificate no more has a market value from my point of view. So try to like study the course and no need to get certified, just know the content of it and the knowledge on, of it. Network security fundamentals, try to know like when we have a network, how we're gonna make it secure, what appliances we're gonna use. You're gonna learn about what is a firewall, what is IPS, IDS, what is a VPN, and more things like that. It's very important to know about these things. But really, these things are going to be important if you're going to work in server security field. But for CTFs, it's not really a big deal. You don't have to learn it. OK. About information security, this is the most interesting part for me because I work as a penetration tester. So this is the area where I work. This is the red part. The information security covers many parts, including the penetration, test, uh, penetration testing, just like I was saying and the malware analysis and reverse engineering and instant handling are just a forensic. I will pause and explain every single expression here. First of all, the penetration testing. Penetration testing is you're going to penetrate a system. You're going to penetrate something. What I'm going to penetrate, there are many things you can do. It. If you're going to do it through an application that is running in your mobile, then now we're talking about mobile penetration testing. If it's a web application, then it's going to be web application penetration testing. If it's for small devices, then it's going to be IoT. I guess now you understand the idea. It's like everything can, you can do penetration testing upon it. And network penetration testing, this is where the OCP certificate focuses on. Network penetration testing is like when you have like a machine and a server uh, that runs many services and you want to penetrate that machine or if you are in, an, in a company that has its internal network and it has many devices 
there, maybe their users are having their laptops or their servers where they store their data. And as, as a penetration test, the, the company asks you to do a penetration testing to your network and to try to find the vulnerabilities in your network and exploit it. This is about penetration testing, and this is what I'm doing, and this is the most interesting part for me, actually. Okay. What about, ma what about malware anal anal analysis and reverse engineering? Okay, reverse engineering, as a word suggests, you're going to reverse engineer something to know how it's going to work. For example, if you have seen an EXE file and actually you don't have access to its code, you don't know how it works, you don't know what this EXE really do. But you're interested to know how does it work. So what you're going to do is you're going to reverse engineer that EXE to know how exactly it works and what the code really wants to do. Maybe it's talking to an external attacker and sending some data there. So you need to reverse engineer that EXE or that file to know what is really going on. Instant handling and digital forensics. These really are interesting parts. Okay. There is a movie, uh, it's called uh, CS, by CS Miami, CS New York. They are making, um, sorry, it's called CSI. They are make, the, the idea of the movie is like, there is someone killed and they are investigating why this one is killed. One of the theories this movie has is that they did one about cyber security. So what they are doing is, Someone died due to cyber security attack and they're gonna investigate what really happened. What they are doing is forensics, but our one here is called digital forensics. So it's like we are investigating, but in a digital way. We're gonna give in like a memory dump and we wanna investigate what did the attacker delete from this memory dump. So this is, this is really interesting. Okay. From my point of view, it's a very good intro to learn about the cyber security, but to start it from the web penetration testing. From my point of view, it's very important that we all learn web penetration testing before starting in any other field, because it's like, nowadays it's like ABC. Okay, how can we know about web penetration testing? First of all, if you want to secure the web, we need to understand how does web work? What are the protocols used? Is this protocols really secured or not? So this is something we need to learn about it. Second, we need to learn about the web attacks that can happen to the web. Then as attackers, we need to practice on these web attacks and make sure that we understand them well. Useful resources we can learn from them is WASP top 10. WASP top 10 always discuss the top 10 vulnerabilities that the applications face, whether web applications or mobile applications, you always should read about the worst of them. And if you want to study about the web attacks, there are multiple courses you can study from them. Hacker 101. I want to show it to you. Hacker 101, this is made by a platform that is related to bug bounty. I will explain a bit what is a bug bounty, but it's mainly, um, it's about like a company, a pays for hackers from all over the world if they have found a vulnerability of their, in their company. This is briefly for now and later I will explain in details what is a bug bounty. Their website, they have made um, a section for learning for new hackers to learn about web attacks. So if you come here, They'll find like access as SQL injection. This is from the common web attacks. They have made a short videos about them so that you can learn them on the fly. So you can check them. And there's another course, it's called Cyberady. After learning about web attacks, it's very important that we practice on these web attacks. We should know how to do them with our hands, practically. Not only that we understand the concept, this is not enough. We should always practice with our hand on these web attacks. Okay, from the good, very good machines that you can use it for that, it's machine is called Web for Penetration Tester. Can show it to you? Uh, 
uh, Hiba, I think we can't see your screen. We can only see uh, the presentation. Uh, you, you can see when I search on the web? On the, on the browser? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We can't uh, see the browser. Okay. Uh... You can, right? Yeah, now we can see it. Okay, Thank thanks you. for letting me know. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, this <laughs> is a machine. <laughs> this is a vulnerable machine. It's called Web for Contrition Tester. This machine is awesome. You're going to see all the, web, uh, all the web attacks out there, and they are classified with variable level, with the various level. Starting from level one, there is no control in place, you can hack it easily, and then there's level two, there's actual control in place, you need to bypass it, and so on. So it's really a good place to start learning from. It's, it's link is already in the material. And since you already didn't see the the, uh, the Hacker One um, website, again, this is Hacker 101, and there are videos out there. It's about SQL injection and XSS and much more. Check them, you'll love it. Okay. And all from the good places you can learn from is DDWA, Diamond Vulnerable Web Application. It is similar to Web for Penetration Tester, but it's good as well. Uh, from one point of view, you should check them both as well. And CTF website, I'll talk about CTF in details later, so don't think about it now. And now, network penetration testing. This part is also interesting for people who want to start their own city. You need to work hard on Valen Hub and Hack the Box. They are having many vulnerable machines that you can practice from. And actually, what I love about network penetration testing is it combines web and network as well. That's why that, I will tell you how. Because maybe there is a machine in your network it runs a web application that is really vulnerable. And through this web application, you can get access to the operating system of the server running it. So it's really interesting. That's why I love network penetration testing. You can practice it through Hexabox website or Valen Hub web website. And the certificate that helps you learn that is OCP, but I don't recommend it for uh, beginners. Maybe after a year after practicing, you can start uh, taking your OCP certificate. It's a very good one and has a very good market value. Consider having it. And again, the digital forensic from innocent response. I want to make it clear that innocent response is like the general concept here that when a company attacked by an attackers and they want to know what really happened, they want to pass through a long process. Starting from the instant handling, they want to stop that instant that the attack is going on and moving on to digital forensics and moving up to reverse engineer. These are references if someone is interested, but these references is not for CTFs. This is if you're gonna wanna work in this field. Okay, about reverse engineering, this is special prerequisites for it. You need to have basic under, uh, programming knowledge, preferably C++, and the basic understanding of data structures, how a stack can work. And then later on, there's a beautiful engineer. She is called Malware Unicorn. This is not her <laughs> real name, but uh, this is the name she loves to be called with. Uh, she's a reverse engineer at uh, Facebook. I have attended one of her workshops at DEF CON this year. Um, actually, she's awesome. She uh, explains the reverse engineering in a very organized way. Uh, and really, I had didn't see many reverse engineers that can explain reverse engineering um, in an organized way like her. That's why I, I really enjoyed the workshop. And she did a great thing is she already has two uh, links here for her workshops. It, they are already published online in a very good way. So you should check them. I can check them with you now. Can you use an upside or not? 
Yes, we can see. It. Yes. Okay. So here the website is called Reverse Engineering 101. She is starting from the very basic, what is Reverse Engineer? And going on in her course, she's going to cover many details and there's labs as well and solutions to these labs. And there is a machine you can download it where you can practice on. So this is really a very organized way to learn about Reverse Engineering. And it has this level one and there is another level two that is 101 that I'm sharing its link here. This is the other link. And there's another book, it's really recommended, it's called The Practical Malware Analysis, it's a good place to start from. And, and there's two links for CTF that is uh, concentrated to reverse engineering, it's called reversing.kr and fairon.com. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about a CTF, what is a CTF? And we're gonna talk about its type and how to prepare for it and every detail related to CTF. Okay, CTF stands for Capture the Flag. It's kind of an information technology, uh, information security competition. It has various levels. It starts from easy one or maybe even basic and moving on to hard one. Its, it's objective is to encourage people to learn about information security in an interesting way. It's like a game. You're gonna play, yet you're gonna learn about cyber security and maybe you can even gain money because some CTFs can have uh, a word as a uh, momentary value. So you can gain a, moment, a bigger reward if you got ranked the first uh, rank or something. So you can actually gain money out of CTFs, but you can actually gain money from other ways I'll mention later, like bug bounty. This is a more realistic way to gain money. But for now, we're gonna talk about CTFs. is one of my favorite quotes. Okay, what are the types there for CTFs? We have real party CTF and attack and defense type. We're gonna talk about each type in details. Okay, the first type real party CTF is typically divided in two categories. For example, the cryptography category, it's mainly about you gonna have a piece of message or a piece of data and it is written in a way that you cannot understand it. Why? Because it's encrypted and you need to de-encrypt it so that you can read the data. So you need to know what type of algorithm does it use for it to be encrypted. So this is really a challenging part and very interesting. The forensic part, it could, what, what we're going to do, we're going to investigate and analyze some type of data. Maybe we're having a network capture from network of a company or we're going to have a memory dump or we have uh, an image from USP and we're going to investigate what happened. Did the attacker delete a certain file? What really happened? So this is forensics. What we're going to do is investigating maybe. And the stigmography. Sometimes in some CTFs it can be included with the forensics part. But let's know the concept. What does it happen? Stigmography, it's mainly about hiding an information in another file or another image. For example, you may have a file, just one file, but when you really investigate, you find that it is not one file, there are two files combined together and you didn't see them. Or maybe it's an image and you see it, oh, it's just an image, but no, further investigation can show that there is a hidden message in that image. So this is about technography. What? What? Uh, I guess this, this is self-explained. You're going to be given a link to a web application where it has a vulnerability and you need to exploit it so that you can get the flag. Phone, it's about exploiting the server to, to find the flag. And reverse engineering, you're going to be given a file, an executable file, like an exe, like I said before, the exe is executable file for Windows. And maybe it is an ELF. ELF is an executable file but for Linux or an EPK, as if it's a mobile application. And you're gonna reverse engineer it to know the code of it. You're gonna decode it so that you know the code written and understand what does it really do and hence find your flag. 
Attack and defense is really advanced one a little bit, but it's idea that there's another server you wanna attack it, yet you need to secure your own one so that no one else can attack you. This one is interesting as well. So CTF is a really great way to learn about cybersecurity. You're gonna learn about new attacks through CTF, a new idea, um, maybe improve your skills through CTF. You're gonna play, but yet you are really learning. This is very interesting. Okay, now I'll give you some resources and links that will really help you. Okay, first of all, there's a website called CTF Time. CTF Times announces about the timing of the CTFs worldwide. So from where you stay, you can be participating in a CTF that is happening in another country online, and you know it's timing from CTF Times. I can show you this website. Let's see it together. Okay, here you can see a menu for upcoming CTFs, and here it's gonna tell you the timing of any CTF coming. And what is interesting is whenever the CTF ends, you'll find many teams submitting CTF's write-ups. The write-up is like the solution of the challenges of a CTF. And actually there is a trick here I'm gonna share it with you. When, whenever a CTF ends, every team has to upload their write-ups. That's because CTF times gives them points when they do this. And actually, sometimes the CTF creators didn't close the CTF exactly at the time it closes. So if you are having the solution and there's the CTF is still up and running, so you can like apply the solution you have already read on the running CTF. So you're gonna, it's not only that you are reading a solution, no, you are doing it by your hands, so you're gonna understand it well. Besides CTF times, there are also another websites that are doing CTFs 24 seven, because uh, just like I told you, CTF is a method to learn from it. So they are leaving their websites 24 seven for people to practice on. From this website over the wire, uh, you can start with Bandit to get familiar with the Linux command. And there's another one, this is actually my favorite one, and this is the one we're gonna play on it at the end of our training. This is called Pico CTF. Pico CTF is, uh, its timing uh, was already earlier in this year, and they have uh, qualifications and the finals and so on, but the CTF already ended, but the, the organizers didn't remove the CTF. We found it up and running. That's because they are leaving it for other people if they wanna know, if they wanna practice on and apply the solutions they have seen out there on their servers. So that they can learn more. So their server are up and running. We can try and play uh, on Pico CTF. This is actually one of my favorites. And this is where our demo is going to be at the end of our video. Root Me is also a very good website to learn on. It has many categories. You can you can practice forensics web and may, or, almost all categories on Root Me as well. And then ACTF, I really loved it as well. And there's another website called CTF Learn. And this GitHub repo, I wanna show it to you. Okay, this GitHub repo, uh, repo is really awesome, just like the name is saying. Why I'm saying so, because it is uh, I knew that this CTF is made by another student, okay? So if they want a platform to um, to like host their challenges on, you can use any of this. Personally, I have used this first one before and it was really good. Okay, if you want to practice and you're going to uh, know which tools should I use it when I'm using web, when I'm using crypto or whatever, this is a very good repo. For example, they shared like tools they are using for solving. 
and if you want to brute force something hash cat is one of my favorite and as well as hydra and drone as well so you should exp you should uh, see this link it has many beautiful uh, links and web for example prep speed prep speed we are going to use it today everyone who is playing web is knowing already what is prep speed is very basic we should all know it so they're already telling you here in this link and if you want to know about the creating system and things we were mentioning earlier they also have good links and this is clear on i was telling you about you already had its link so this is really a useful link you should check it out Okay, these two links are different. Hack the box and Valen Hub. They are not really CTF style like the previous ones, but uh, they are like vulnerable machines. And as I told you before, they are combining web attacks with na with network ones. So they are really interesting, and you should consider them if you want to improve your skills to be a network penetration tester. They're really awesome. And really something very good in your CV if you try to. If you could be one of the top like 100 or 50 hacker on uh, on hack the box this is really awesome you should consider doing this and the most important resource is just google it hacking is about learning something on the fly and ctf really helps us to get this skill when we go to a ctf there's always a new thing because this is the objective of ctf to teach me something new if I seen something twice, oh, this is like <laughs> coincidence. This cannot happen. In CTF, there's always new ideas. There are always uh, new topics I'm learning about on the fly. So I'm always need to Google and self-learn myself. So it's really normal that you want to go CTF, you see a new topic. What should I do? I don't understand anything about that. This is totally normal and all of us is like this. And we just Google the topic and, and Google it so that we can know how to learn how to learn to solve it or how to deal with it. So consider self-learning and consider that you always Okay. Let's gain money. As I told you before, we can do this through some CTFs if they have a reward that is money at the end of your CTF, or there is another way. The another way I wanted to talk to you about is bug bounty. Okay, what is a bug bounty? Bug bounty, it's mainly about um, assume there is a platform, just like a hacker one or many others, but hacker one is one of the famous or bug crowd. This platform where companies from all over the world contact hacker one and say that I want hackers from all over the world to do penetration testing to some links that are in a scope. They put some links of their websites or a link to their application and they say that they want hackers from all over the world to test these items that are in scope and if they find a vulnerability in them and they could successfully exploit it they should make a report to hacker one and hacker one gonna deliver it to this company and if this attack is really right the hacker gonna gain a very good amount of money I'll tell you one of the interesting things about bug bounty. I was attending uh, a session where one of Facebook engineers was talking and he was actually saying uh, or explaining about the awesome uh, security that Facebook is having as their place. And the last line of security Facebook having is, we are having a bounty program such that if any hacker found a vulnerability that we as Facebook engineers couldn't identify, we can take care of it. And actually, there is was an active researcher that kept reporting vulnerabilities to Facebook. And later on, Facebook hired that hacker or that uh, security researcher to work with Facebook. So bug bounty program can be a very good way to get hired in companies, big, just, uh, just like Facebook, or maybe even bigger. And it's also a very good way to gain money out of hacking, out of something you really love. OK. So what are the platforms we can do bug bounty on it? We're having Hacker One. Hacker One is one of the famous actually. And as I told you, they are having Hacker 101, where there are resources that help you study things, basic things about, uh, you know, about some vulnerabilities so that you can get started with them. And it is very uh, important that 
when you go to a bug bounty platform that you manage to get invitations to private programs. Private programs are different than the public programs. What is the difference is private programs just send invitations to smaller amount of hackers. So less people are testing on these links. Just it's easier for you to find a vulnerability more than a public one because a public one, just like the name suggests, everyone is testing on it. So it's going to be harder to find a vulnerability. It's not impossible, but it's going to be harder. So hacker one. So on hacker one, if you want to get an invitation to private program and you have just started and you have just created your account on hacker one, what should I do to get a private invitation? There is hacker one on one CCF that if you solve with it and get like a minimum of points, you can get, you can start getting invite invitations to private program. So this is a very good thing about hacker one. And there's always other, uh, other platforms like, sorry, like Integrity, like Sysba, Backcrowd, Yugosha, Zenac. About Integrity and Yugosha and Sysba, these are relatively new uh, bug bounty programs. Hacker One and Backcrowd, they are really old. So many hackers are already there. The new ones, you find like there, every now and then there's a new company on, the, on their website. So it's, it's a good chance you can get started there this is slightly like easier way backdoor <laughs> to start. So consider them. Senac is a very good one, but it's uh, it's advanced a little bit. So you don't have to start there. You can find an easier way. Unless you want a challenging way, it's, it's totally fine. Okay. If you, to get in the cybersecurity field, it's also important to attend conferences to gain knowledge. And on the other hand, to like do um, to do networking with people in your field. So you can start with the local conferences in uh, India. And you can also watch other videos that are in other countries, just like DEF CON in Las Vegas, USA. You can watch its videos online. Uh, you will learn a lot. This is a very interesting company, uh, it's a very interesting conference. And if uh, one day you work in USA or your company is a good one, we can send you to DEF CON. This is really very interesting uh, conference. And there was, I did some research and found two conferences that I heard uh, that they are good and they are in India. Uh, maybe there are many, but uh, I don't live there, so <laughs> I'm not expert in India. Uh, but you can uh, check if there are more conferences that are good. Uh, consider going there and do networking uh, so that you know more people in the cyber security field. And this uh, conference, I didn't attend it myself, but I heard a good review about it uh, as well. For me, I just went we can, to the first one. Yeah, we can them. add OWASP Seasides also. We can add OWASP Seasides also. Seasides. It's S E A C because it's at the beach. So East Sea sites. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and this is interesting. In which country is this one? Yeah. It's in, in India. Uh, sea sites. Oh. Yeah. S I D E S. I would love to attend it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in March. It's oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's by the sea. Yeah. Oh, wow. Should consider going there. <laughs> yes. And it's free for anyone to attend. Oh, it's just wow. right before Nalcon. Just right before okay. Nalcon. Okay, great. I think so. You can yeah, it's sides. That. Yeah, it's S I D E S. Good yes. like this. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and now let's play CTF together. I'll show you some things I do about CTFs. Okay. First of all, you need to have a software like VirtualBox or VM Workstation so that you can run another operating system on your device. Okay, some of you may be already using Windows or maybe they are having the Apple, so they are having Mac OS, but they wanna have another machine, another operating system running on their laptop. You don't have to buy another laptop. Instead, you can use virtualization. How can we use virtualization? This is through the software that I'm saying, VirtualBox or VM Workplayer. Using them, you can use another operating system and 
work with it as if it's like uh, a new laptop. I will show you in seconds. You can see my vulnerable machine now? Yes. Mm, yes, we can see it. Yes, you can see it. Okay, great. Okay, he, here I'm having many other machines. This is web penetration testers, the one I was telling you about uh, to learn uh, web attacks from it. And I have Kali machine here and Kali and another make exploitable. So I'm running many machines on the same physical machine. Okay, the operating system that I'm using now inside this vulnerable machine, it's called Kali Linux. Kali Linux, it's very useful. Why? Because it has like many tools already installed in that we're gonna use it in doing filtration testing or CTF. So it's like many your uh, many tools are already installed in one place. So this is really good. And of course, there are missing tools out there because um, everyone is making their own tools now. But it's easy to install things on Kali, so you can um, download Kali. Okay, another thing that I use it for Cherry Tree is a very good program and that helps you keep notes in a very organized way. You can download it from any link. Of course, let's try to choose the official one. I guess that was the official link. I don't remember because I installed it like years ago, but I will tell you about, about it. Okay, I have a Sherry tree here for CTFs. Whenever I play a CTF, I make here notes and keep notes of it. For example, there's Pico CTF and uh, there's some web challenges that I wanted to practice. So here I make like a sub node and, and I can add screenshots, I can add words, so it's very interesting way to keep your notes. And it's very important to, like I told you in the beginning, to keep archive of all the, the CTFs you played. So that maybe, maybe there's an idea that is somehow repeated uh, or the same topic exactly that is repeated. So maybe if you've taken some notes, that would be useful. And maybe you need the same article. You need to get to the, back to the same article you read the, in the previous challenge. So whatever. This is a very good way to keep notes of your uh, your CTF solution. What we're gonna solve them uh, now? We're gonna solve them challenges from Pico CTF. I told you it's my favorite. That's why I chose it. Okay, this is the link of Pico CTF. First of all, I will start by a crypto challenge, and then later on, I will move on to a web one, where I will uh, first show you what is proof and how can we set proof suite. Okay, first of all, we are having we are having a crypto challenge that is a warm up, it's really easy. Let's go to Pico CTF the website. This is Pico CTF website. You can find here many challenges. And it is already ended. I mean people have already applied many write-ups. So, and it's still running, so you can like try to solve it at first by yourself. And then later on, you can find the solution for uh, the challenge that you, that you couldn't solve and then apply uh, with your hands so that you can really understand it. So let's start by crypto. Okay, it is say that the numbers, what do they mean? If you press here, you'll find an image that is downloaded. We'll find a group of numbers here. We don't know what do they really mean. But actually, we know another information. We know that the flag format of a Pico CTF always starts with this way. Okay, how did I know this information? If you've checked here, can you see that? There's Pico CTF slash flag. So from this, we can deduce that the flag format is Pico, small, and then CTF capital, and then there's some words up here. 
And if we recheck the screen, the, the image that was in challenge, you see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are having seven letters before the braces here. So most probably, put them here. Most probably, the first, uh, six, the 16 will mean the P and the nine will mean the I and the C will mean the C and so on. So what does that suggest? Oh, this is the alphabetic. This is uh, like the order of the alphabetic. Let's back to the slide. We are having A as one and here P as 16. That is the position of a certain letter in the alphabetic. So the string they gave to us is 16, 9, 3, 15. From the image, we can really get the value of the flag. I wonder, can any of you give me now the value of the flag quickly? I will give two minutes for that. Anyone solve it? Oh, I'm seeing many applications. Oh, no one can solve it, it's very easy. Oh, well done. <laughs> okay, the first, the first right answer. Is, uh, your name is Pawan. I hope I've uh, pronounced it right. Well done. Yep, it's Pawan. Pawan. Pawan yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's the winner here. Okay, so the solution, just like the she made, this is Pico CTF, and of course there was spaces here. We removed it because we already know the flat format. There is no spaces. If there's a space in the flag, it's gonna tell you. But here they didn't tell us that, that there are spaces, so there's no space in the in our flag. Okay. Now let's move to the weapon challenges. Before we start, we need to know about a very important tool. It's called Perp Suite. Okay. What is a Perp Suite? Perp Suite. It's mainly a proxy tool. What does a proxy tool mean? Proxy tool means, for example. We are the attackers, okay? We are the bad guys now. We are the one on the left here from our laptop. We are connecting to Facebook. So we are talking to Facebook server. What if we want to see how the communication is really happening? As we all know, when we talk to Facebook server, we are using the web protocols. What protocols we are using? We are using the HTTP or HTTPS for Facebook. Of course, it's, it is HTTPS. So now we are talking to a web server. So there is a request being sent and there is a response being received. OK, so to see this, we want to know. To see this, we are going to use a proxy server that is acts like um, intermediate thing so that we see the request that is being sent from our machine, from our browser. And we're going to see the response that Facebook replied back to us. OK. Perp, uh, we can download it for free. And there's also a professional uh, version from it. But we're going to use. Oh, we can't hear me. Uh, everyone, do you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, there's someone having problem. Okay, so, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Even if okay. there's they have a problem, uh, there is a YouTube live going on. They can uh, tune into that also. I'll just post it on the chat, so you can keep going. It's fine. Okay, you can okay. you you can leave the chat. You can keep going. Okay, okay. I'll take care of the chat. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, so perp suite. How can we set perp suite to act uh, like our proxy tour or intermediate tour so that we can see the, resp the, um, the request that is being sent to uh, Facebook, for example, and the response that is being coming back from Facebook. So uh, now I'm going to teach you how we can uh, have perp suite and how can we set it. Okay, if you're running Windows, you will need to download it. You will easily find the link here and download it. And it's very easy. Next, next, you're gonna have for here. And if you are having Kali links, perp suite already installed here. You'll just need to search for it. You can type its name here, perp suite. And go start now in the startup browser as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tell our browser to send the traffic to perp suite first and then perp suite will send it to Facebook. I'll tell you exactly how this is done now. Just waiting for the browser to wake up. Okay, how this has happened is that when I open my browser, we press here, this is Firefox for example. We are pressing on preferences. Okay. And then we're gonna press on advanced. Then we find network. Then we press on settings. And then we're gonna press, you will find your uh, laptop on here or here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna choose manual proxy configuration and we're gonna add the configuration just as below. What is this IP? Actually an IP normally it means uh, address of a certain device on a network. And here, this IP address, it is the IP of my local machine. So here I'm telling the browser to send the traffic to my local machine. And this is the port using on my local machine. This is the same port that perhaps we could be listening on. Okay, after we're doing exactly like this, we got, we're gonna press okay. And then perp suite should be ready to start. Short perp. The free version from perp it is slower than the professional version. That's why I find it, it took like some time to start it. If any of you um, the professional version, you find it really faster. Okay, now we are having perp suite. Here we are having the proxy tab. Let's press on options. And here the listener, make sure that this is pressed. What happened here is we are telling Perp Suite to be listening <coughs> on the local machine on this port. This is the same port that our browser is sending tra traffic to it and Perp Suite is listening on it. So the traffic is being sent to Perp Suite first and then Perp is gonna redirect it to whatever host, so Facebook or whatever, Google or whatever server I'm talking to. And here there are the settings, except the client request, here are the settings that you use for your request. Maybe you don't want to intercept requests that don't match GPG or GS or whatever. Here you can adjust whatever you want to do. It's really useful that you check this one because you're going to intercept the responses because you want to see what Facebook replied to my request. So it's very important that we press on this if we need to. And now this is the intercept option. We have intercept on and we have intercept off. Intercept on and off is if we gonna intercept, if you want, if we want to intercept the traffic, we will see, we will press on intercept to be on. If we just don't want, we will press off. Okay, let's test our connection. I guess I'm running to talk at the same time. Oh, 
Oh, I unchecked it when I was pressing. Okay, here now. Okay. So now, in my browser, I have requested this URL. Now you can see in perp that there is a request synthesis. So the request that I typed here has been passed to my perp first before going through the server it's meant to talk to. So I can now drop this request or just forward it. So I'll just forward. And this is response that came back now. If I don't want to intercept, I just want the flow to be normal. I'll just close the intercept. I'm gonna make it off. So now we have set a proxy. We can now see the request and the response is coming to and from our server. Okay, let's start playing some graphic challenges. I know you're already tired. I'll just solve the two, one. It belongs if, <laughs> it depends if you're really uh, still willing to hear or you're still really tired. Okay, I already knew that. Okay, let's start by the first graphic challenge. It's called Interceptor. Okay, what does this challenge say? Let's back to EcoCTF and say what really the question is saying. Web exploitation and then inspector. Okay, have a moment to read it. Okay, so here the name of the challenge is this e it is suggesting inspection. So the code needs to be inspected. So let's inspect it. If someone don't know what is an inspection is, right click here and then view page source. You're gonna see. Or if you wanna inspect a certain item, you can press here and inspect element. So whenever you press here, you're gonna see the corresponding client side code down here. As you see. Or you can do just like I did. I just I press the view page source to view the the whole code, course client side code of uh, the website. So here, when we inspect it, we find, wow, interesting, what is that? It's saying this is one over three of the flag. Oh, so this means that <clears throat> our flag is on three parts and this is the first part. Interesting. Let's come back here. This is a hint here. It is saying I use this, I use this to make this website. I use HTML, CS, and GS. Ah, there are three things, and we have already found part of our flag when we inspected the code, which is the HTML code. So apparently, maybe the other part of the flag is in the GS file and the CSS file. We can do it with perp, or we can do it in another command, and I want to do it so that you learn many ways. I will make a directory here. <coughs> I will call it temp. I'm gonna see the here. It's very important that you get familiar with the Linux command because it's really easier and you're gonna love it more than Windows, I promise. You're gonna love it more. Okay, the command I wanna teach you is wget. Wget is used to download web pages. But here I'm gonna use wget or I'm gonna download all web pages of this. That gonna include the HTML file and the CS file and the GS file. Let's do it. I'll copy the link here. And assume you just don't know what does wget do. You can Google, Google it or you can say man, wget. Man stands for the manual. So you are gonna say, what is the manual of wget? Press enter. I'm gonna tell you what does the uh, wget do. If you scroll down, you're gonna see the options used by the wget. So it's a very 
good way to learn about uh, commands if you don't know what does they do because there are many commands out here out here so it's totally normal that you don't know what does all of them really does so let's do wget dash r and then i'm gonna paste the url and then press enter interesting it's done let's see what did it download i'm using cd this is stands for change directory so because I want to go to this place. Okay, how did I know that this is directly not a file? If I press ls-l, you see that the first thing stands for directory. Directory is the same as a folder in Windows. <coughs> but now we are in Linux. So I'm gonna do like a cd to go. I can do it from the GUI, but I wanna like, I wanna you learn about Linux commands. That's why I'm doing it using the cmd, okay? There's another directory and there's another. Okay, interesting. These are the files used in the challenge. Okay, let's try to read these files. Okay, we can do this through many commands. We can use cat and see index.html. Actually, index.html, this is the one we already seen in our perp or when we did inspect in the browser. And this is really the first part of the, the flag. Then keep it here. I'll keep it, keep the first part here. Okay. Let's read another foil. Let's read the CS foil. If we press tap, it's gonna continue the rest of the word. I don't have to type it all. Okay, let's read the CS file. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Interesting, the second part of our flag is here. Let's keep note of it. Nice, the last part should be in the CS, apparently. I can use cat as well, or there's another command, it's called the string. Strings, it's used to read the strings in the file, so we can also use it to read some files. So I can use it now. Interesting, the last part of our flag is here. So now our flag is ready to be submitted. We can put it here and submit it and we should get our points normally. Nice, we have did the first one. Okay, let's solve another web challenge. Okay, there's another web challenge that is called open to admin. Okay. This is a link of the challenge. I didn't get it from the website because uh, in Pico CTF, you won't see all the challenges unless you have solved uh, previous ones. And this one I solved it before. Uh, and this is a new account I've just created now because uh, I don't remember which <laughs> email or password I used when I was playing. Uh, so this link wasn't available when I opened now, but it's okay, I keep record of it. This is the importance of keeping records. I already know the, the URL of the, challenge, of the challenge directly. So just open it now. Oh, the challenge opened here. It is saying the home, sign in, sign out, and there's a flag. Let's pass on it because we love flags. Open it. No. Oh, it says, I'm sorry, it doesn't look like you are the admin or it is the incorrect sign. Okay, let's read what does the challenge really wants from us. It just says, the secure website allows users to access the flag only if they are admin or the time is exactly 1400. Okay, so let me think, what does, how does the website know that I am the admin or not, or I'm logged in or not? We should be using a cookie somehow. So 
when I was solving the challenge, I made many guesses actually. I will show you what did I do. I press on flag and open the intercept. And then I will do right click and send to the repeater. What is a repeater? This is a uh, like an option in perp so that I send the request here and I see the response here easily. So why did I use a repeater? Because I want to do like many try and error. So it's easy to do it in the repeater than doing it in the browser. Okay, so my guess is the website is gonna check upon two things to know if I'm administrator or not. First of all, there's a cookie called admin and there's a time that needs to be exactly like this. So my guess is I'm gonna add a cookie here and maybe it's named like an administrator equal calls and there's another cookie that is called time that is equal 104 thousand. let's see what's going on ah doesn't that doesn't really look look right <coughs> it doesn't look right okay my second guess is Sorry, this should be true. And this is not right too. Okay. It doesn't have to be admin, maybe it doesn't have to be administrator, maybe it's admin, so I did like this. Oh, there's a page here. Let's scroll down. Nice, we are having our flag. So that our guess was right that it is using a cookie to know if we are an admin or not and if the time is really 1400. So this is our second flag. You can submit it now in the website if the challenge is available for us. If you didn't see it well, I have made it again. Here, I have made a cookie, administrator equals true, and the time is 1,400, just like the the hint, the, the question was saying, the challenge was saying. And there's also hints, but I don't press hints easily. I always try to like challenge myself more to uh, know the answer. And this is the solution. Okay, that's it for our training for now. Uh, I hope you guys do good in your CTF. And you need to solve more by your hand and get to know many ideas. This is very, very important. It's going to be good for your work. It's going to be good in your CTF, in your bug bounty, whatever. You should always like learn new ideas. In our field, there is non-stop learning. You always need to know about all vulnerabilities. You should know about how to do them by hand. So CTF is really a great way to do this. Uh, you can gain money from CTF as well or from bug bounty. Or maybe you can have part-time job. Uh, besides being a student. In Egypt, we have some companies that started to hire students as a part-time. I'm not sure if it is the same in India, but even if it's not, you can do bug bounty or just for freelancing. So if you love cybersecurity and consider it as a career, hopefully that helps and good luck in your CTF. Feel free to contact me. This is my LinkedIn URL. Uh, hopefully you like it. Absolutely. It was amazing. Thank you so much for giving the training today. And, oh, I'm glad uh, you like it. <laughs> absolutely. It was really, really amazing and helpful. Uh, and I'm sure it's going to help a uh, lot of students and professionals who want to uh, play CDFs. Like I personally uh, love playing CDFs, so I know how much it is important to learn the basics and tech techs that uh, how to go ahead with that. A lot of people have these questions and I'm sure a um, lot of answers uh, have been given by you and we'll look forward to many more sessions from you. Um, we do had one question in the chat that will you be sharing the slide deck? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, we need Perfect. the slides, please. Yeah, I will share it. Thank you, Hiva. You're amazing. Uh, oh, you're welcome. I'm really happy that you like it. 
very, 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 <laughs> very informative. I post a tweet for you on Twitter also because this is uh, very, very um, amazing and I'm proud of you. Oh, what a beautiful thing. So much. <laughs> Great. If everyone has questions, I can stay here. Uh, for We have uh, like 15 minutes or 20. If someone has question, I'm here. Sure. Uh, meanwhile, I'll check the YouTube channel as well if there are any questions on the YouTube channel. Okay. Mm. YouTube channel doesn't have question. Okay, great. Uh, whenever you have question, even if uh, you're listening uh, for it after <laughs> and you're not live with us, if you're free to send it to me uh, through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so there's someone who has asked the CTF is online. Yes, the CTF is online as well. And uh, I'll post uh, the details in the chat so that you can get to know about it. It's um, it's by Team Metrics. Uh, and the name of the CTF is War Games. Let me just post it. So the people who are in Pune, they can go to the Symbiosis uh, and uh, they can play. Also, uh, this training is going to help uh, in the future CTFs as well. And the recording is available uh, on the InfoSec Girls uh, YouTube channel. You can play anytime. You can go back and uh, listen to the whole thing. So I've just posted there. I'm going to post it on the YouTube channel as well so that... Uh, you can check that. Great. So uh, thank you so much again, Heba, and everyone yes, for yeah. joining today. <laughs> oh, yeah, most welcome. I really enjoyed my time with you today, and I would love to see you all face to face. This will be more uh, interesting, I know, one day. Inshallah. 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 Yes. Inshallah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>